Hello and welcome to a new video about contour engineering. Now we know a lot of stability things. Yeah? And we will make use of it now. Yeah? We will make use of the Nyquist criteria. Well, let's remember what the Nyquist criteria was. Here I have this, this picture from last time. We see, yeah, we accepted that there is a phase reserve, there is an amplitude reserve, and I have to maintain a certain distance to the Nyquist point and so on. But how, what is good? Yeah, or what is not good? What are the goals simply? Yeah? We know all those stuff now, but we don't know where we want to go. Yeah? Well, let's remember how our transfer function looked like. Yeah? So actually our FW was FO divided by 1 plus FO. And we said this should be 1. And to reach 1, we can never reach 1, however, FO shall be as high as possible. This was our conclusion. And let's have a look at the disturbance transfer function. The disturbance transfer function was the system transfer function divided by 1 plus FO. And we said, this shall be 0 disturbances, shall not be visible in the controlled variable. To have this as close as possible to zero, FO must be big. Yeah? So in both cases we said FO shall be as big as possible. And this is already our first clue. Yeah? So this FO yeah, shall be as high as possible. Okay? This shall be as high as possible. Uh, and What's what what's with this crossover frequency here? This this omega d. Yeah. This is somehow related to how fast our system is reacting. Yeah. The higher the frequency here is, yeah, the faster the system is reacting. This means this shall also be as high as possible. Yeah. So it seems like it would be a good idea to shift this as far to the top right as possible in the Bode plot. Yeah? Do what, whatever measures we have to take. Yeah? We want to shift this up to the right. Omega d as high as possible, FO, the, the gain factor, as high as possible. Yeah? What is the difficulty? The difficulty is to maintain a reasonable, reasonable phase reserve or amplitude reserve. Yeah? This we have to maintain yeah, somehow. So actually, it all comes down to selecting, selecting the correct controller to our system. We said the system is pretty much given, yeah, and we can select the controller. A lot of times, a lot of times, this FO looks like an IT1 element. Yeah? So, if FO from S looks like an IT1 element, so if the open loop transfer function looks like an IT1 element, the closed loop transfer function, yeah, this means closed loop, looks like a PT2 element. Huh? Remember how a PT2 element looks like yeah? in time. If we have here the reference variable and we make a jump with this reference variable, yeah? then our controlled variable is reacting, our x is reacting, and it, if it looks like a PT2 element, it may, might look like that. Yeah? Make a little lower swing, and then reduce. Yeah? 
BT2 behavior. Yeah? If this is a BT2 behavior in the closed loop, then usually the open loop transfer function is an IT1 element. Yeah? If we have that case, yeah, here we have this over swing width. Yeah? It's this U in percent we said. Yeah? We can make a rough estimation, rule of thumb, yeah, that we say our phase reserve, alpha r, in degree, plus the overswing width in percent is around 70. Yeah. So we have alpha r, 70 degree, then we are at no overswing. Okay? If we have alpha 50 degree, we have 20% overswing. Yeah? So this is, it's not exact. It is not exact. Yeah? However, it's pretty, simply for first estimation. Okay? So this is, this is actually what this alpha r means. Yeah? This is a relationship to the overswing. And the crossover frequency, so the frequency where we have a gain of 1, yeah, this is somehow related to the time here. Yeah. The time, like which color? Here. Yeah. Here, this time to the first overswing. This is corresponding to omega d, the the crossover frequency. Yeah? So as if the crossover frequency is higher, yeah, then this is getting shorter. It's reacting simply faster. Yeah? So actually it's 1 divided by omega d. Yeah? This is proportional to. Yeah? Also rough estimation. So this is why we want to, to have those, those things. Yeah? So we want to have a high omega d crossover frequency. We want to have a high fo, yeah? and at a reasonable alpha r. That's it. Yeah? This is how we could design our control loop in a body plot. Okay. Simply look at the body plot. This need to have a high FO is the reason why we want to have an integrational part inside. Yeah? So that we want to go up here, up here. Yeah? Because then at low frequencies, we really get a high FO if we have somewhere an I part inside. So this is, these are the basics. I will show you now on the computer, because it's simpler there, some examples. Yeah? how we could do this, yeah? so that you know what I am talking about. Yeah? Right now, well, it's maybe a little bit confused, but I'll show you on the computer and I hope it's then better. So what I've prepared are simply some, some curves. Yeah? I will now assume we have a system which is behaving like a PT1 system yeah, as a startup, and this system has a certain parameters, the system cannot be changed. Yeah? And I want to find a controller for it. I've decided to use a PI element, a PI controller, yeah? and see what I can do about it. Yeah? So let's have a look at this. Yeah? The yellow line here, this is the system. This is how the system looks like. Yeah? And the green line, this is my PI controller. And here are my two parameters of the PI controller with my DN. I could shift, if I'm using 0.1 for instance, yeah, I can shift this, this characteristic frequency somewhere to somewhere. Yeah? 10, yeah, shift it to the left. The higher the numbers are getting, the more I shift it to the left. And the smaller the numbers are getting, the more I shift it to the right. Yeah? So if I have only 0 0.01, I'm already here. Yeah? Because simply this band frequency there, yeah? this where, the frequent, where we change the, this transition frequency between the I part and the P part, this is simply 1 divided by Tn. Yeah? I would just use something, 100, I don't know. Yeah? With this K, I can shift 
up and down, currently it's 1, if I'm using 0 0.1, I can shift this whole curve up and down. So this is what happening if I change the parameters of my PI controller. And I have to select parameters now of my PI controller. To take a look at the closed loop transfer function, which is actually this multiplied by this. Yeah? So the controller multiplied by the system. Yeah? Let's, let's select the sum as well. It looks like that. the phrase. Huh? It looks like that. If I'm now shifting, yeah, you see it's just shifted with. Huh? And now I could simply select where we want to, to go. Yeah? And we said the interesting point actually is the one where the crossover frequency, yeah? so where our closed loop, or sorry, our open loop transfer function, the black one in this one, is reaching 1. Here's gain factor 1. Yeah? So if we look down here, we can see we have a phase reserve of above 90 degree, 90, 94 maybe, yeah? because we have the phase reserve up to minus 180 degree. Yeah? I have to tell you, this is for sure not how it looks in reality, because in reality there is nothing like a PT1 element. There are elements which are close to PT1, however there are always time constants will be, which will be significantly smaller, but they are there. So somewhere here, above here, I will do, I will do have some additional bands down. Yeah? So, but just to show you how this is working. Yeah? If I'm now changing uh, the TN value, for instance, to 0 0.01, yeah? I shift it to the right, I say, ooh, aha. Uh -huh. Now, what is good actually, is that this FO is getting high values here, yeah? because we said we want to have high values. And also the, the frequency where we, the crossover frequency is omega D, this has been raised. Yeah? Let's compare it, it was 100 before. Yeah? If we are at 100 and if I'm using 0 0.01, yeah, we are above 100. Okay? So actually these two things, this was good, right? Let's see, if we go in down here, yeah, you see we also have reduced the phase reserve and also this here is ugly. That this is even before we are reaching, there is a low phase reserve here. This is this is not nice. Yeah? So actually I have to find something in between and I am using 0 0.5 now maybe. Aha, uh -huh. better, uh, better again. However, you see it's now making a little bend to the left and then up again. So I'm losing actually gain factor of FO. Uh, I will use simply the same time. And there you see, ooh, this looks interesting. Yeah? This looks interesting. I've used now the same time as the time constant in the PT1 element. So this would mean these phases, they are exactly compensating each other. The total phase will always be minus 90 degree. Yeah? And I can simply select with my, with my a proportional factor. Yeah? I can simply select where this is located. 0 0.5 maybe, yeah. So you see, oh 0 0.05 this was even. You see, I can shift now this line up and down. And of course, if it would look like this, there is always 90 degree phase reserve because we will not leave 90 degree phase reserve. Huh? So I could select this this proportional gain factor of the controller. Uh, incredibly high, simply somewhere, doesn't really matter, because then I would fulfill all what matters. Yeah? So you see, uh, yeah, in a, if a PT1 element would really exist, the gain factor would not have influence on the stability. However, as already said, a PT1 element 
is not really existing. Yeah? There's always a PTN element. To show you what I mean, uh, now I've shown you the principle, how a PI controller and, uh, uh, works with a PT1 uh, control system. Now we'll switch the control system to a PT2 control system. we we'll see what we can reach there with our PI controller. Okay. Prepare the spreadsheet, then I will explain. Okay, so I've now changed the system to a PT2 system. I've left the PI controller like it was before. Yeah, and now it looks like that. Look at that. Yeah. So this is now a system yeah, which is now a PT2 system. It will simply transition. There is pretty much high damping of 4, yeah, with a K of 2 and the omega N of 1. So this is how our system looks like. Uh, PT2 system. And this is our PI controller and this would be our open loop transfer function, uh, the, the black one. And here you see if we are here at around 10, at around 10 we have a small and tiny phase reserve only left of uh, 80, 10 degree maybe. Uh, oh, really tiny. Two less, two less phase reserve. So actually, what we could do is we could change this this uh, proportional gain factor. We'll use one now. Then at least we are coming down. Uh, we are coming down. And we see here we are now. But also this phase reserve it doesn't really help. I can even use zero dot one maybe. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Now it's getting better a little bit. It's getting better a little bit. Here you see we have here a small bump. Uh, this is why those bumps, uh, they are really not nice. Yeah? We can always try to compensate one of those bumps, one of those bands of the system with our controller. This is, I can tell you, this is uh, always a good idea to make this little bit more smooth. Eh? So we could either compensate the upper band or the lower band. If I'm compensating the upper, ba upper band, so this is actually here, then you see that the tr transition here, this looks very smooth. Eh? Looks very smooth. Eh? And here we have even a phase reserve eh? of uh, still we want to have around 50, 60 degrees, so we should get at minus 120, somewhere like there. Yeah? So we would still have to in decrease K and here, oh still, we would still have to decrease. Let's see if, oh yeah, now we are here with, oh it's already too much, yeah? 0, 0, 0, 1. Yeah? And so I could select where See, with the gain factor of the of my proportional controller, I can now select the the phase reserve. Uh, if the more gain I give, now we are here, here. Well, I'm adding now gain a little bit. Zero zero five book. Uh, now we're here uh, with my our one, and we are here. So this looks now pretty nice. We could think about that. Yeah. However, you see, we have a gain factor of only 5000. 0 .005. Yeah. This means actually here we are pretty low. Yeah. It is indeed a better idea to compensate not some time constant, we compensate the first, yeah. so the highest time constant. With our, with our controller. If we do that, in our case this is 8, the higher time constant, yeah, then you see the transition is also smooth, as smooth as before. However, now it's not transition, transitioning here somewhere, yeah, start to transition here, it is transitioning at this upper part. Yeah. And now you see I am, I am able put the zero or the, the one that the crossover frequency to higher values. Yeah? So I can 
I can add now gain again. One, fuck, let's see. Yeah. Oh, we are still here. I can even add gain. Yeah. Ten, fuck. How does it look like now? Yeah, okay, somewhere here. Yeah. Since we have compensated now the lower time constant, yeah, our transition to low phase reserve values is simply higher. So it is always a good idea to compensate the lowest time constant or the, the highest time constant, the, the lowest frequency, yeah, the lowest band frequency to, with the highest time constant behind, this shall be compensated by the, by the controller. You see, you can indeed shift around the controller with different parameters and can expect different outcomes. And again, we have the case, if we are moving this now with K up and down, we can influence the phase reserve and with the phase reserve, the overswing and so on. And you can even see now it is exactly the case that our open loop transfer function has IT1. Looks like an IT1 element. So the I part of the controller helps us to reach at low frequencies, high, 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 high values of FO. This is helping us to reach our goal that FO needs to be as high as possible. So at slow, slower changes, yeah, we can expect this controller to be accurate. Yeah, this is what it means. At low frequencies, we have really high values of FO, so our FW, our reference transfer function, will be almost 1. Yeah. And also, the controller transfer function is much higher than the system transfer function, so also our disturbances will get, we will get rid of our disturbances. Yeah. And now to the, to the crossover frequency, I can influence the crossover frequency by shifting this black line up and down with the help of the proportional gain factor of my controller. Yeah? And I have to find a trade-off between, I want to have this as high as possible, so I would need to shift it up. Yeah? However, I want to have a reasonable uh, phase reserve, 60 degree, 50 degree, something like this. Yeah? Maybe a little bit less or more, depends on the depends on the system or depends on on, on your application actually. Yeah. Then, yeah, I have to maintain this. Okay, I have even to consider that again there will be lower time constants, so there will be pan and pan. Somewhere it's really steep going down. Yeah. This is usual in PTN systems. Yeah. So this is actually how this uh, design of a controller in in a border plot is working. Huh? The basic. Right now I just played around. We found out already that maybe compensating the biggest time constant is a good idea. Huh? And then we shifted it up and down. Yeah? In the next videos, we will get to know really approaches like a receipt. Yeah? So next video will be about the optimal amount. Yeah? There are some rules for it, how to apply this, and then you can expect the, the system to look, the, the, the reaction of the system to look like this. Yeah? Optimal amount controller. So one typical way of how to adjust the controller. There are some rules, you will get to know them. Yeah? This one will be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.